Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's as we celebrate the 20th Sunday after Pentecost and the day of the Greater Lycoming Area of Papua. I'm going to ask those who are participating in our walk from St. Mark's to please stand, both walkers and sponsors. Please don't be shy. Thank you. I point that out because as a congregation, we support the commitment to ending poverty. We walk and sponsor walkers because others must walk in all kinds of weather. That means that the rock walk takes place, rain or shine, and begins here at St. Mark's. And we say at 1 p.m., but in truth, it doesn't take an hour from 12 to 1 for registration. So if you come early and want to begin early, that's fine. Please note the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has provided revised guidelines with regard to our mask wearing. Following these guidelines and specific recommendations of our Bishop, Bishop Collins of the Upper Susquehanna Synod, Church Council strongly recommends that masks be worn, social distancing followed, and to speak and sing in very low tones when worshiping in St. Mark's building. Specific instructions regarding Holy Communion are printed for you in our bulletin. All who trust in the risen Christ is present in the elements of bread and wine are welcome at our Lord's table. If you are joining us today by way of video, this worship service is a recording and is not a live stream. Its bulletin can be found on our website and Facebook page. Share appreciation to Gary Weber as our videographer, our lectors, cantor, song leader, communion assistants, and our organist as well. We begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. I ask those who are able to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
increase in us her gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord.
As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not fraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it would be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields, for my sake and for the sake of good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My granddaughter loves Elmo of Sesame Street fame, and she associates anyone with a laptop or a phone to be an Elmo provider. As soon as she sees me enter her home with my laptop case, she says, Hi, Elmo! She would watch Elmo 24-7 if it were up to her. One activity Elmo does that she is very fond of is follow the leader, or as Elmo calls it, Do what Elmo does! And she does it. She knows how to play that game very, very well. Follow the leader. Do what I do. It's a game we've all played in our younger years. In our gospel for today, Jesus teaches that his followers are to follow him with the same enthusiasm as children have when playing the game, follow the leader. To let him lead. To believe in what he says he does. To look to him as the identity he shares. To acknowledge that in following him there are great benefits. Forgiveness of sins. Life eternal. Mark tells us in chapter 10, Jesus is sent out on a journey. When he encounters a man who asks him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Interesting way to ask the question. Since when do we have to do something in order to inherit something? You inherit based upon what another wills, how another sees you, whether or not another considers you 
upon eternal life as a commodity. Something you can earn. Something you can bring about by the right words or the right actions. Maybe even something he can buy. His desire to possess eternal life is so strong that he is willing to try anything in order to receive it. Even flattery. Look at the way he addresses Jesus. Good teacher. In the first century, good teacher was quite a compliment. Jesus answers the man, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Don't murder, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, honor your parents. Jesus, in his response, steers the conversation toward obedience, toward following God's commandments. Why do you call me good? Why are you attempting to flatter me? Says Jesus. Jesus then cites all those commandments involving how we treat one another, teaching that God's law is kept by one and neighbor. Jesus teaches that this is the way of God, the way of God that brings life now and for eternity. The man says he's done that. He's kept all these rules and commandments since his youth. Jesus does not challenge his integrity. He does not challenge what the man says. Jesus looks at the man and loved him. Loved him enough to tell him the truth. You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. To follow Jesus is, well, to follow Jesus. It's a relationship. It asks something of us. It asks for commitment, a total commitment, a radical commitment. It asks for obedience. The instruction to sell everything means not to permit anything to get in the way of following Jesus. This is why the man is shocked while why he goes away grieving. He was possessed by his possessions. He counted his blessings, his favor before God by the things that he owned, the things that he did, the things that he said. To follow Jesus as described in this reading is taking our baptism seriously. Baptism proclaims that by water and the word we are reborn in Christ. Reborn to see him as Savior. To see him as the one who provides forgiveness and teaches us how to forgive, how to love in his name, how to embrace what he brings us. That's a new existence. It's a new way of looking at our world, at our society, at the people in it. It is the way of looking that says that Jesus is a Savior and Lord. Following Jesus is the way of eternal life that demands a specific way of living now. A life governed by love of God, love of neighbor. Eternal life is not so much as a destination as it is a state of being. An existence that begins here and now and continues throughout all eternity. We live eternal life by following Jesus, by believing in Jesus, 
by putting our faith into action, by doing what Jesus asks us to do. Therefore, eternal life is speaking and showing kindness to others. At work, at school, chance meetings on the street, certainly here at St. Mark's. It's that when we watch or read or hear the news and learn about immigrants or refugees, is our first reaction one of hate and suspicion? They're coming here to steal what I have. Or do we follow the lead of Jesus with care, compassion, welcome, prayer? When the numbers relating to COVID soar, which they seem to do almost every day, do we look for someone to blame who's not wearing their mask? Or do we grieve and ask God for guidance and to strive to communicate truth and love? Do we see today as an opportunity to take action and to make our earth a better place to live by participating in our crop walk? Remember, crop is an acronym for communities responding to overcome poverty. Or do we say, well, you know, I'd really like to participate, but it might interfere with watching the football game. One community in which I was a part, I'm sorry to share, actually would schedule their walk around when their favorite Pennsylvania team was playing so as not to interfere in the activity and the game. In other words, the afternoon of the walk would have to be Sunday when the team was playing at 4 p.m. or Sunday night or Monday night or Thursday night. And, and by the way, I had nothing to do with scheduling the walk. I had no idea that the Bills played tonight, okay? <laughs> Our first priority is Jesus as Savior and Lord. Eternal life is a state of being, a life to be lived now. Diana loves to follow Elmer. To do what he does, to sing songs, to follow his lead. Think what would happen if we would follow Jesus with the same zeal and enthusiasm. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, Follow me.
affirmed our fact. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered for the conscious pipe, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last.
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and in heaven, we praise your name and join your unending
do so by way of a basket provided. Trash receptacles are also provided for your convenience. Reminder that this afternoon is our walk walk. If you have not had an opportunity to sponsor walkers or that you would like to walk, there is still time to do so. You're asked to contact walkers or simply stop by the registration table. Registration begins at noon. First communion classes begin next week. Please note the information in your bulletin regarding the first communion classes. I ask you to take note of the many activities and ministries that are scheduled for the near future in our community as well as here at St. Mark's. Please stand for our communion prayer as well as to receive our blessing. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 